started. Okay. And uh, the first order of business on our agenda today is uh, approval of the minutes from July 23rd and September 10th. I make a motion to, I make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Okay, great. I second the motion. And ladies, are you including both the 23rd of July and the 10th of September? Or just one? Yes, yeah, so I was making a motion to accept them in total. Yep. Both. All right, thank you. Can you second that? I second that. Great. All in favor? Could we say the aye? Aye. 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 Okay. Good. So the second agenda item is an initial review and a discussion uh, regarding the revisions to the personal policies, the checklist, and timeline. This might take a little bit more time than what anybody anticipated. I anticipated taking a little bit more time. So, um, who would like to lead that discussion? I have a couple of questions, Chair. Yes. Um, one of my first questions is when I read the uh, SB 26, Disciplinary Procedures for Police Officers, um, one of my questions is at the very end of that whole document, it says, if you are already doing this or more, you are in compliance. So it looks like you guys have already had, um, you know, kind of a preliminary conference on that. So have, have we decided that we are in compliance or do we in fact need to do more? Take it or? Sure. Okay. I'm sure. sorry. I'm looking over that direction yeah. at the no, Jennifer's. Do I have to go to a mic? Would that be helpful? Yes. You yes. Should. Just right. You can just grab it. I can bring it over here. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. And then you'll tap it. Okay. That's dangerous. Now the green light has to be on. Oh. Okay. For you to be heard. Perfect. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Okay. Light. I think I tried to introduce myself to everyone, but for those that I may have missed, my name is Jennifer Baird. I'm an attorney with Lauber Municipal Law, and uh, we are the city attorney for the city of Independence. Um, one of the things that I, I do for the firm, because all we do is represent municipalities, it allows each of our attorneys in their office to kind of specialize in a certain area. So one of the things I like to work on a lot is having to do with HR and personnel matters. So um, one of the things that when I met with staff, uh, we talked about looking at um, the city's policies and procedures, uh, personnel policies and procedures, and looking at possibly updating them. So that's where this timeline came in as, as I was looking at the personnel document, and I wasn't looking at it in detail. I was just looking at it from a totality sense of, okay, if we were to update, how do we go about doing that? Because that's a big project to take on. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first things I wanted to do is, is just note that there are some new legislation that came out this past year. And I think that's probably something we need to address first of all. So with regards to your specific question, um, we have not really looked specifically at the city's policy and compared it to the new legislation. This timeline is just to give an idea and it's a very tentative timeline. It's to give an idea of how we see the process of going through and looking at the personnel policy and updating it, what that timeline may look like. So that would definitely be part of what we would do is look at your policy, you know, does it meet or does it even exceed what's required by statute and then determine if there's any changes that need to be made. Okay. If that I was helps. just looking at this timeline that, that indicates that that would have already happened. Um, so I'm not, calling that sure. out. I'm just saying, you know, I, let me just say overall, this is very detailed and I hope we can stick to this because you're talking a year from now, Christmas, when all of these are done, you know, and, that, and that's not to say anything other than it just takes time. It takes time to do that. And that's understandable, but I just hate to see us push, you know what I mean? If we're starting to push from the top, then we're, we're just going to be pushing, you know, as we go around. So um, I was just curious about that um, because it made the, 
the comment here, determine which section of personnel policy to update. And with, with the disciplinary procedures for police officers, um, I would just say as you look at it, and you won't have an answer today, because like I said, you haven't gotten into the specifics of it, um, but uh, you know, like I said, at the very end of that document, it says, if you're already doing this or more, then you're in compliance. You don't need to do anything else. So hopefully we'll address the this or you know this or more first, obviously. But then second of all, I have a question that um, whether this belongs in the personnel policies and procedures, and or does it belong in the contract with the FOP? Mm -hmm. In which case it belongs in the contract with the FOP because I would um, I would assume that this is a change to work conditions. I would look, nod to my union people to see, but if it is, then that's gonna need to be negotiated if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's gonna take this timeline further out to take, to address that. Um, I, I will say that police officer discipline is in the contract. And so um, again, Jennifer, you know, she was just putting what legislation is out there. We negotiated a new contract this year with yep. FOP. So, I'm I'm pretty sure that we're we're good there. Okay. Um, but certainly, you know, that'll be something that we look at. I mean, we had a labor attorney that helped us negotiate it. So yeah, um, yeah. So hopefully, we are at yeah. the bottom yeah. of you don't yeah. have to do anything more. But that's just right. something I wanted to bring up because, like I said, right. if that's in their contract, correct. So that won't even be something that, that we, we determine. Do, right. right. You got okay. it. You got it. Um, okay. My second question is, um, as I look at. Um, as I look at this document, which is very thorough and I appreciate that. I'm very much a timeline, lay it out, what do we have to do type of person. So I really appreciate this document. Hey, Carl. Um, one I, item I had a question on, um, this seems, this was set up in a sequential, you know, article two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever how many there are. My question is, and maybe this has, you haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, but I'm concerned that there might be some items in here that need to be triaged above other items. So I'm gonna throw an example and I don't, you know, this is just pure thought. Is it, say for instance, there's a section that's um, FMLA related that is not up to date. That is obviously critical to be up to date before the policy on, you know, something else. So I'm curious to, as to if this has been looked at from the triage perspective and you're like, nope, it's okay, we go, you know, one through whatever, or if we do need to have right. you guys tell us that we need to re-triage this, I guess. I use my medical terms. Right. <laughs> no, no, and you, you bring up an excellent point. Um, we were not looking at it from that perspective. We were just trying to give everyone an idea of how big this project could be and you know how are we going to tackle it so that's you know certainly we need to redo rearrange this is just a tentative agenda to give us an idea and keep us on track so yeah we can definitely look at different areas first okay um My other thought was, um, and I, and again, understanding that you're still, you know, diving into this, are there any policies, you know, not only looking at uh, general provisions, you know, whatever, that you will also be looking to determine, and again, this might be a triage issue, is do we have a policy that is missing? Like, for instance, when I review nonprofit uh, uh, charters or their, um, that's the word I'm looking for, no, the, their charters, whatever, they often don't, they're missing something, like, for instance, a document retention policy. So I'm like, okay, we need to fix these things, but you need a document retention policy at a nonprofit. You know, so just an example, again, have we identified things that we don't have at all, like a social media policy or a, whatever the new things are that this, these haven't been updated in 20 some years um there are a few that yeah, have a, been yeah because we've have been, been involved in updated couple. yeah um I, I think the other thing you bring up a good point laura is that 
like a document retention policy is not necessary. That's not a personnel policy. Oh, no, no. That's an, an administrative policy. So we think that there are some administrative policies that have been created that should be a personnel policy. And we think there's some personnel policies that maybe are more of an administrative policy and, and may not, that might not be the, the place for it. Like, um, I'm thinking of the new work leave for domestic or sexual abuse. We need to we need to get that in a policy very very soon, like this month now. <laughs> um, so that that's a new a new law that needs to be policy. And when does that go into effect? I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, now, August 28th. It, it is in effect. Right, but, but we had we don't have a policy. Yeah, and we have time to get that, but it it should be done this month. So that's okay, so when we're going to be having another meeting then this month that you're going to have to give two weeks notice for us to be here. Right. I mean, like, like we're at, we're at October. Well, eight. you'll get it to us I, so I we can will, review it. Like, yes. Right, right, so and you and review it, yes. Then you so throw it out next to us, meeting. give us two weeks notice. We have a meeting, then it goes to the council and then all. So mm -hmm. I don't know how that all gets done by the end of October, but I understand right. that we need to. Right. Hi, yes. So, Yes. And then, like, we don't have an ethics policy. I, I would recommend we have an ethics policy and yeah. that that be in a personnel, the personnel policy. And that 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 is that's a guiding mm -hmm. you know, policy, not an administrative policy. Right. And so, that to me is a triage thing. Like, yeah. we should have an ethics policy. Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why we don't have one is a little beyond me, but I have to say I have not read through all the policies and procedures. I've only gone to the ones when I've needed to look at guidance, but um, so yeah, I'm, I'm obviously hearing that there are things that are at the top of this list, right? Um, which also then uh, makes me think that when we, uh, I think this is our second item on the, and last item on the agenda, um, is that we're going to need to have, we're going to need to schedule more meetings quickly this month if you're going to be wanting to take that to council by the end of the month. So um, those are those are my thoughts. I'll let everybody else, you know, have a chance to speak and then we'll see what everybody's other thoughts are. Perfect. Good questions. And, and then there, there's going to be policies that, you know, we're going to have to discuss and at some point, um, you know, make a decision on diversity policies, um, EEO policies, bringing those into the 21st century. Um, those those are going to be, I, I, I would assume, you know, some pretty lengthy discussions, but yeah. necessary if discussions. Our, yeah, if our EEOC policy is not up to date, like that is this month due. I mean, that's... And if our FMLA, if any of that's in there, it's not up to date. Mm -hmm. That's now. You know what I mean? That and that it is. I, you know. I can talk. I can speak to FMLA. Yeah. Our FMLA yeah. policy is up to date. Yeah. Now, and that's the other thing that we're going to have to decide: are are our policies up to date with the law? So, do they meet the minimum of the law? Yes or no? But is that all we want to do? Is meet the minimum of the law, or do we want to do we want to take it beyond the law and 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 make it the city of independence and that's where some policies will impact culture could impact culture because we could say that that policy meets the very minimum that the law says we have to but do we want to go beyond that sure sure and 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 i and i definitely agree with that i'm, I'm just seeing more of the urgency of us you know, like now, like to me that, you know, this bill, you know, like you have it on the schedule to eventually have this, the work leave for domestic and sexual um, violence law portion of this in place, but that's not going to happen until December 6th. But now we're talking about this is already a state law. And so we need to get it in this month. So we're now talking about pushing up December to the next three weeks. Right. Is that what so I'm at least review it. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I, I guess what I, I guess what I would ask, um, and if others agree, is that this uh, once you get into this, we really need a triage. You know what I mean? Like EEOC is not is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. 
that is more critical than I, I, I can't even think of something to example, but you know, something that's like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's, an, that's important, but that's not critical because we're saying we have issues with law. And, and to me, the things that are issues with, and, and to your point, Jennifer, they, like you said, we can come up to the minimum of law, but then do we want to be more generous than that or more restrictive, depending on which way the, the thing goes. Uh, but uh, I'm hearing that we need to be meeting more frequently and we need to be getting these things on the calendar. I, I would just say, I, from a legal perspective, I would say we are in pretty good shape. I mean, I, again, we, that, that won't take much time to say where, where are we legally. I, I, I'm not that concerned necessarily because we, we also have past practice which sometimes will um, even be more than what the law says, right? So the law might say this, but this is what our practice has been, which is another thing that Jennifer is not gonna know, and, and maybe even you are not gonna know what has been the city's actual practice on something, and do, do we change our practice or do we change the policy? And then again, taking certain policies, um, and I'm gonna just use like EEO policies, that will drive other policies and how we change or modify or create those. So there is a certain order, depending on how you wanna look at this, that we should follow. Right, and I think that you make the exact point that I do, that yes. just laying these out, one, two, three, four, five, I mean, we're already, we're already way off just the first section, you know, so, um, but We've again, had a few I'm, things happen in the city, so no, we... <laughs> no, I, I understand, but, you know, to know that this law went into effect and we don't have any policy on the book at all means that that is... I mean, that's critical. You know what I mean? Like, we should... You know, I'm hoping that you can get this done by the end of October, which means we have to have a meeting scheduled for us to approve it and there to be an open hearing on it in two weeks. So you like almost need to give the notice now if you're going to get it in front of the council that fast. Um, I, I guess, or maybe maybe when you may, you said October, you really weren't meaning like by the end of the month. I, I'm not trying to be. I'm just trying to understand how critical the work we are, the, what we have that's critical, and what do we need to do as a body to ensure that this is moving that fast. Sure. Yeah, and I will tell you right now that you know, you are not the first city that's right now looking at updating the policy and, and getting these new regulations and getting policies in place. You're not the first city. A lot of cities right now are, you know, because you don't know, everyone's kind of looking to each other saying, okay, well, how is your policy written? Uh, you know, the, the law, when it comes out is always, it's never clear. <laughs> There's a lot of what ifs and what's going on. And so anyway, um, so a lot of cities are in this place. So I don't want you to feel like, okay, we're, you know, we're going to go down in flames <laughs> if, we, if we don't get it done by the end of the month. I certainly think that we can get you something by your next meeting for something for you to discuss and take a look at. Or even Does before, that, maybe even before the next meeting, oh, yeah, so yeah. you can at least have time to review yeah, it yeah. and then bring the questions. Yeah, Whatever your packet the, deadline the is, yeah, absolutely. But, but, you know, kind of too, the way this is written is, and this is typically how it's been from, I have to look to my senior people, I'm the junior member of the group, um, but, that, you know, it's brought to us at the time when there's the, there's the actual, uh, notice of hearing to all the people. So, and that, that requires, a, you know, 10 days, two weeks notice. So are, are we planning to do this? And I'm looking, because I'm not sure who to say, are we going to follow this, which is that you guys do all the work internally and then we're presented it the week before the meeting, hopefully the week before the notice goes out so we can have a little heads up there. Or are you going to look to us for input on it each particular policy. Does that make sense as to what I'm saying? And I, 
I don't mind either way, but coming to us with each policy for, you know, wordsmithing or, you know, whatever it might be is going to drag that timeline out further. Um, typically we've been presented like, uh, when the July 19th or excuse me, July 1st, 2019 new employees will no longer have health, you know, they'll have to pay their own premiums when they retire. We didn't know anything about that until the public hearing, which was, you know, right before it went to council and that type of thing. We didn't have input on that. We were just presented that. So that's, I make questions to Teresa, how we want to handle that. I don't, I don't know. I I would say that it's it's our responsibility to write the policies, one on practice, precedent, law, all of those things, mm -hmm. and then present it to you before anyone else you know sees it. Like we we get it to how it 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 is either being practiced or you know right. what the law says and how it fits with with you know the city of Independence, and then we give it to you for you know, comments, uh, you know, it's public. I, the part about, do you want to see it before it goes to public? I mean, yeah. yeah. Do you want to say something? Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I think this is a good idea. I'm in with the, the chair's thought maybe. I, I think we need to take this calendar that, that we provided to you um, and actually put what the actual time dates would be required to meet the council meetings in order to get those. Yeah, and that's and that seems to do this because so, it falls like on our next meeting and then the council meetings and all right. that. Right. And at the same time, um, ask your input on the what you feel is priorities. We'll have Jennifer give her input of like she highly recommends that this go first. I think as you say this the statute, but then for for instance if we wanted a council action, because all of these ultimately would be council actions, we're probably looking at November 15th as time in order to give us, uh, and that'd be the quickest council meeting. So backing up from that, we would need a packet for the council by November 8th. We would need uh, yeah, we you to council. meet by November 5th in order to make that packet by the November 8th. And then you would need two weeks, which would put you at you know, us providing something to you by October 22nd is kind of the. And, and those and those are their dates are close. I mean, we're seeing here review by council on the 22nd. I think you said the 18th. I, I mean, I, I'm not looking at the calendar to see when the study sessions sure. are. I'm just, I just I just have to be looking at the calendar right now. Yeah. And I just know. You, yeah. Yeah. So we're kind of re, in, re, uh, starting in the end and working back up with yeah. what we need. So, yeah. yeah. And so I think the earliest that we would be able to meet again for the, for public hearing and everything would be like November 5th would probably be the earliest we'd be able to have that in order for us to get you the policy that you would, I think at this meeting even kind of come up with what you think is the most important priority for us to bring back to you, get it to you by the 22nd internally for you guys to review for us to set up a public hearing then for this board for November 5th. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of, although I think there's something about not Friday meetings or something in the future. I, no, I it, well, I don't know anything about that, but like it says here, review personnel board shall hold the hearing on the proposed changes on November 12th. So you're saying we, we could bump that. Okay, so November 12th, we're meeting the second Friday of every month. So that is the second Friday of November, which I'm assuming is why that was chosen on, on the, as the yeah. date here. I, I'm just saying, if you're going to do it on the 12th, you're not going to have something for the council ready to go. That would be a December 6th council meeting to approve that policy. Yeah, yeah. and that's what this says. That's, that's, so that's why I'm okay. asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what this all says. So that's what okay. I'm asking is like, if we're... <laughs> So, so when I look at the, you know, the personnel board, the hearing, the public hearing, basically on November 12th, and then of course everything else happens after that. That's the city council after, you know what I mean? That's to them, but you have to give two weeks notice ahead of that to have that meeting. But are you wanting to have a meeting before that for our input on the wording of what you decide, which in the past, we've not done that. We've just been told 
you know, you're going to have a public hearing in two weeks to review this policy change. Am I wrong? I mean, I have to look to you guys, Carl and everybody. How has it gone in the past? How's it, how's it gone in the past, Chair? This is my first time, so it I really don't I know that's why I'm looking at the chair. <laughs> it really hasn't. We haven't been before the um, Council for Policy Changes. Yeah, we had, well, we had the one in 2018 that went into effect for on July 1st. And as, from my remembrance of that one time we've had that policy change, um, we did, in, in fact, we, I remember because we had the meeting, and I, Butch, I think maybe you were there. I can't remember who all was there at that meeting, but it was basically, this was the, the public, let me speak into this, probably helps a little better. So that was the public meeting, so anybody could come. Um, that was the first time we were presented this change to the policy. And the reason I remember that is because our recommendation coming out of the personnel board was, was that we didn't have any data to support this. What was the cost savings going to be? What is the, you know, I remember Ron, I remember you asking, you know, like, I think you actually made the motion that we as a, as the personnel board cannot make a recommendation for council to approve this because we don't have anything supporting this now. Of course, and this is and what happened was the council said, okay, well, personnel board did not make a recommendation, and they went ahead and approved it, which is which is their I mean that's their volition. That's what they can do. So I'm looking. That's the one time that I've had any experience on this board in my six years or whatever it's been that we've had a policy change. So when you brought it to not you know you guys, none of you were here then. It was brought to us, and it was like, well, oh. Okay, what does this mean? How does this affect people? How does this, you know, we just then could not make a recommendation. So I'm asking, has, is that, have you guys had policy changes before that or that's really literally been the only one that we've actually had brought to us? Okay, so we're setting new precedent. <laughs> so, I, well, I should say precedent was set with the other one that we weren't presented anything until the public hearing, at which point we felt like we didn't have enough information to make a recommendation. And then that lack of recommendation was taken to the council. And then of course they act upon it. I would like us to see, to be able to make a recommendation. Yes or no, not just something's presented and we're like, well, I don't, I don't know enough about this. Which in which case then, you know, if you're going to post the public, if you're going to back up from this city council action, review at the, I assume that's a study session, our review, so two weeks before that, but that's the public hearing. And then, so we would need to meet before that to have the, if we want to have any input or have staff question, you know, answers from the staff about something. So, you know, you're looking at today's the, the eighth and you're talking about like basically having the policy written next week, give us a week to schedule a meeting, and, and then that follows on that timeline. I, well, I, I'm saying that I don't know that that can happen. But, well, uh, for the chair, um, it, so we, we, we know some of the parameters that we're working with. One is we're in open enrollment, and so my recommendation is to limit our meetings to once a month for staff-wise. And so I, I would propose that, again, we would send you the cleaned up policy as recommended by staff two weeks ahead before the meeting. You know, there's open records issues. We wouldn't want you to have any kind of conversations, but to have individually feedback for us to have prepared at the public hearing then for us to answer questions that you would have. Okay, and so then, you would present, so we would say, okay, let's just make up some random date. December 15th, we're gonna have a public hearing. So you're gonna put that notice out two weeks in advance because that's just what's required. But we're gonna have it two weeks before that to make comments and then you know speak with you individually so that by the time, well, maybe just a week in advance of that because then there's a week and then we have that two weeks to get to the public hearing. We have time to clean all that up. 
So I think what we're saying is maybe at the time that the notice has to be posted and right. put out, you would get that packet. So okay. That's at least two weeks before the actual meeting. Right. And what we would say is, here's what staff is presenting as we think is the best for the city. But we would encourage you to take a look at that before the public hearing. If you have individual questions, maybe contact Jennifer. And, and then that way, when we come to the public hearing, we can certainly address those things, have that information. Like if you're wanting to know cost, you know, questions, those types of things, we can have that prepared. So when we come to the public hearing, you know, we'll present it, we'll answer those questions. And, you know, obviously if, if it's one of those situations, again, where it's just, you know, we think it's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of discussion about, especially when you talk about benefits or what have you, not that I'm saying we're gonna change anything in that section. Right. I'm just right. saying as, you know, obviously those are very important things and we may consider, you know, holding, you know, we'll, we'll talk internally, but maybe, maybe we need to hold two meetings before we adopt anything, you know, just to make sure everybody understands what those changes are and how that will affect them. But yeah, because I'm, I'm, I just want us to be, you know, not only of course the, you know, the, um, sunshine and all that type of thing, but you know, our, our discussions to me should be available to any, dis any employee of the city who wants to hear the discussion as opposed to, you know, I understand like sending questions ahead, like, but not having discussion at all back and forth just these are going to be my questions please per, uh, you know be ready to answer those on that date which then may change the language in which case when then we would have to make a motion to change the language and then whether we could get if that motion passes without going back to council and that type of thing then we could make a recommendation if we get right on that date and we still don't have all the answers or now we've seen something that makes us want to change something then we're not going to be able to make a recommendation, which is going to push us out more because then we're going to have to have another public hearing. So I'm just, I am trying, and I, maybe I am taking more time than necessary to say that I think our timeline, we, this is a good timeline, but we really have to know how we're going to do that and, and, and get on this timeline. Cause like just that one bill is not going to get approved by the city council until December 6th. Yeah, I, I would say every meeting you're going to have a public hearing and telling staff prepare the next item. I, there'll be two decisions from these meetings, at least two decisions. One is holding the public hearing, making the recommendation, but the other one is here's the next policy that we want in two weeks almost to consider the next one. So it, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. And so- It is, it is. And I, I think that this work is absolutely critical and we need to we need to focus on this um, we we are so excited about this i know i uh, understand we really appreciate you guys uh, yeah I, openness to, to help us get these things taken yeah. care of so that that would i'll, I'll just say it and then i will again stop but that we we need a triage of this you know not just one through seven type thing um and then you know as this is obviously a fluid document as things change you know, because we also need to make sure that when we have our next meeting, again, we don't want to discuss something that's not on the agenda. So we, you know, everything is the week before, the week before, the week before. So I think I've made my point. So. It, um, I wonder if this is the time that we really should skip on the agenda um, to number three, which is a discussion of a new meeting date and time. So the city has asked that we not meet on Fridays and that we not meet in this room. So our meetings would be Monday through Thursday. I'm not, I'm not sure what room, maybe this room. I don't know. So as I understand it, um, the requirements for this, uh, this board is to not not to stream, but to record and then to upload the recording after the meeting. Uh, today, actually, I'm, I'm having delivered, if you recall the first meeting we had, I had that little owl thing that did the 360 that was able to record. 
uh, that the that was a loaner that's being delivered now. So we should be able to have that meeting with that technology almost anywhere. And I would recommend either if you don't here works uh, back at City Hall in either conference room A or the one down downstairs. in the downstairs next mm -hmm. to the council chamber. I can't remember mm -hmm. what that one's called. C. Okay, D. thank you. D. 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 All right. D. D. So, so we would be able to to have that meeting with that technology, right. and we, we would just record it and then upload it. We wouldn't need um, the additional staffing Staff. or actually have to be at this location. And what is the I think more complicated is that we can't meet on Fridays. Yeah. What's the reasoning behind that? I'm sorry. What's Friday. the reasoning behind why we can't meet on Fridays all of a sudden? Marissa sent me a note. Yeah, well, again, if that was it, I need to double check with that, but I believe that has to do with the person that sets these rooms up schedule on the streaming part. But again, I don't think that we have a, a restriction on the recording if I have that technology. Um, I think we would still be able to meet Friday mornings. Once we have owl. Once we have that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Understood. Yeah. That makes more sense. I didn't know okay. why Friday was all of a sudden. So there's a there's a it's change in technology that we're going to be able to add us to do that. I do know that there's okay. um, management wise. We we're trying to limit just internally our Friday meetings because if you look at the the leadership, it is nonstop meetings and we're trying to have a time but i think friday mornings jennifer yeah, yeah i think we, we could definitely do this as long as no one tries an afternoon friday so, <laughs> no. so um I, I think we'd be good to stay with the friday morning and if i'm if i'm mistaken i'm terribly sorry if i'm mistaken on this but i'm feel pretty comfortable that we'd be able to do friday okay mornings. Makes me feel better. Yeah. i don't mind going to city hall either. right yeah we don't really care where um, as long as we have the technology that we need, and um, Friday works for the the board. So that sounds and, yeah, and I think we sh we should go to City Hall, just because that saves you guys time driving around and doing all these other things. That takes just that much more time. It's not necessary, so I would agree with City Hall. Okay, so are we saying then that we're going to keep the meeting? We can ignore. Can you tell? If you talk to them, I think it might be. Sorry. You know, you're like, you have a tiny voice. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. This is not a tiny voice. So, I'm sorry, Ron. Um, so, we're saying that we're going to meet at City Hall, not here. At what room at City Hall? Can we decide that? No, I don't room. agree with that. I. We should be meeting here. It's more handicap accessible. It's better for the public. The room is nice and clean. You don't have to park away. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, this is a beautiful facility. I mean, I don't know why we don't use it. Friday, how many city meetings are held? I don't see any. So this is the perfect location. We can accommodate some people here. There's a lot of chairs. Staff-wise, we are open to whatever the board. Okay. Decides. Well, I I, I love this room. Myself too, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm partial to this as well. We, but we appreciate I'm, the thought of that, but this it doesn't matter. I understand too. Sometimes it helps to get away from the mothership because then you can actually get other things done. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say that. I can say that. <laughs> you know, so. Still recorded in the minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So okay, I, I'm good with that so as well. So back here, for me here, it will remain on Fridays. It will remain 10 a to 12 noon. Okay. Good. That that's over. Very good. Now Got that, Mitch. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just like to follow up if I can on some Absolutely. of this. You know, when I was up to about midnight last night looking over this schedule, which starts about now and proceeds clear into Christmas of next, of, year. Of next year. And I said, my God, I've worked in about a dozen municipalities and hospitals. This is not how they create personnel rules. 
somebody gets together, HR staff, legal staff, they put a best practices HR plan together, meeting all the laws, they bring it to the advisory board like this and to the governing board. And all of these meetings that are scheduled and hearings and all, you know, it sh shouldn't be this complicated. Yeah. And and bring it here. I, I, I know there's some things that need to be changed in the HR personnel rules, but let's not make it complicated. As far as I know, the employees are somewhat happy with the city of Independence. Hopefully that's the case. Let's not have anxiety on the part of employees. Well, what are they doing now? I know she and I went 50, 25 months ago to a meeting. We didn't have a quorum. I think Mr. Carner was there, I believe, if I can remember right. And it was a crazy presentation. Uh, and we didn't have a quorum to really act. But it made no sense. I mean, it was a, re uh, it was a layoff procedure, as I recall. I mean, you know, I don't think it was thought out, and 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 we need to look at a best practices set of personnel rules consistent with the collective bargaining agreements. And if you got things like Senate Bill 26 and House Bill 432, those are administrative regulations that are based upon something out of our control. So I just don't think we need to make it this complicated come up with a proposed set of personnel rules, work on it for the next three months, let's get together in January or whenever. Uh, and the second thought is, anybody watch the city council meeting the other night? I mean, you know, what did you think? You think they're gonna agree on anything? Uh, you know, somebody's supposedly gonna be recalled. I mean, is this the timing that you should start changing personnel rules or pay plans or anything like this? Let the dust settle. Make sure the city manager is in place beyond the next election and the personnel director is here and the administrative staff is here. And then we can proceed from there. Uh, I just think we've rushed into this and I don't see the point of it. Some of these HR policies have been in place since the 1960s. And the reason I know that, because I was an intern in the city manager's office in the late 60s, and a lot of them were there. And we worked on them back in those days. And so, you know, they need to be changed. I, re I realize that. But let's just don't press this thing so quickly. And the legal folks, they can have an opportunity to do their thing with Jennifer and the rest of the staff. So that's all I got to say. That's excellent comments. Um, our our hope was, you know, the best time to 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 change these policies were ten years ago. So we were hoping to to help to, to help get up to speed. But I I the the. The thing that really resonated with me, what you said was was uh, staff anxiety, and yeah, probably having a hearing every month would probably cause anxiety. That that's not the purpose of this. We, I'm looking at Jennifer. Uh, I don't know how much we you want to bite off at a time, but maybe we could maybe make it more of a quarterly or half a year, or an, uh, but we just there are some things that we feel pretty strongly with it, like the ethical part that we talked about. Um, some things we really do feel we want to get into our policy. Um, but I, I totally understand the month to month, but maybe we could decide on what the top priorities are. Do it over three months instead of every month or do it. So we're, we're totally supportive of that. That That's, that's good and I would And I would comment, because some of these are from the 60s, is why I have more of a let's get moving, you know, type thing. And I do understand this is you know, a year from Christmas that this all finishes. But I also don't know, I remember when they were trying to change ordinance three related to animals and, you know, fowl and whatever that ordinance is all about dogs and stuff. And the council wanted to take it up as a 
you know, change everything you want changed, bring it to us and we'll vote on it. Mm -hmm. Then it was, oh, we don't like this piece or that piece. So then they broke it apart. Mm -hmm. I don't know that presenting to, you know, like if we in, say three or four months or whatever, we present two pages of personnel policies and procedures, regardless of who is in there, they're going to be like, uh, can we take these one at a time? <laughs> You know, yeah. because I think they're going to get overburdened <clears throat> if we give them one big document, which is why I would prefer that we do it in chunks. But again, doing it in chunks based on what, I, again, I say triage, you know, I think that if there's a council member who's not going to vote for an ethics policy, that's, I mean, it's not our job to determine what they're going to do, pass or not, but that's critical. I mean, and the things that, the things that I'm concerned about are when we haven't changed something since, you know, 1960 and we have new law changes, we run into risk management issues. You know, someone comes and says, you know, I, I know there's this law and I fall under this work leave requirement for this. And we're like, oh, we don't have that policy yet. Not to say that we can't do that, but then that precedent becomes, comes before the implementation. You know what I mean? I would prefer we have implementation before we have somebody come to, not saying they can't, but before we get to that point to do that. I, I personally think that this needs to be more aggressive, not less aggressive. But because of the fact that we have to give two weeks notice for this and, you know, all those things. I, I think this is a great framework. It just needs to be triaged. But I don't I, I don't know that I could support waiting and providing one big huge thing. And and even to come to us, we, you know, in three months with here's five pages of changes, or you know, whatever the number is, is a lot for us to digest mm -hmm. too. That's just my thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's complicated for us. And we're HR experts. Can't imagine how complicated it might be. Oh, it's just beyond my understanding. Really, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be there. Um, if I if I were city council, I, I I think. Can you hear her? No. <laughs> Sorry. You're gonna have to use that. Let me Great. use my loud voice. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, use the, you're yelling at the grandkids' voice. <laughs> oh, we don't do that. Who yells at grandkids? I don't do that. No spanking, no yelling, no spitting. There's some basic rules that you don't do with the kids. <laughs> um, I'm not even sure what I said. Um, I think I was talking about the, a bigger document going to the city council. And if we are HR experts to some degree, that would overwhelm me. That would what you? That would overwhelm me. And I'm yes. an yes. HR expert, supposedly. So if I were a member of the city council and I got a great big document, um, that would overwhelm me. So I think we say with breaking it down in smaller chunks, triaging, I like that word a lot. Um, as best we can, knowing that we're going to have some stops and some starts because we're going to discover uh, things that we missed along the way and that we want to go back and capture. Okay, where does that leave us, Ron? <laughs> where are we? Did you have a question to him? Did you say Ron? Say that again. So where are we? I mean, I know we're on planet Earth and all that in the city of independence, but um, hey, there's a little humor there. Work with me. Um, so I think we go back to what we've been talking about. We break this down in smaller chunks, we triage. Uh, we just have to get a starting point. And I'm not sure where that is. So, you, so you're asking where do we go from here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, I believe that, 
I would make a recommendation, not necessarily a, a, you know, a motion per se or whatever, but I mean, th this is talking about policy, you know, a plan of action is that we stick with this plan of action. So basically this first white piece of this document says that we will meet on a public hearing on November 12th, which is our next regularly scheduled meeting which means two weeks before that on November 2nd, you have to give the notice to the personnel and you know whatever notice you have to give that we're going to have that. At that time, you would present to us whatever, I'm sorry, when you give that notice of hearing, you provide to us internally, draft form, confidential, to review ahead of time, just submit questions to Jennifer, who will submit them to Jennifer or get answers so that at the public hearing, we can have those last minute questions answered. You will know what we're concerned about. So if you need to make a change, you could hopefully get all that in before we get here. Um, and then we are ready to then provide or not provide a recommendation, you know, or for gifts, you know, that we make our decision on the second or excuse me, on the 12th, so that it can go to council on the 22nd for, I assume that's a study session, and then they take, uh, or maybe that is the first reading and second reading. I don't care. Whatever happens to the city council after that is not our time frame. But So I believe that by, I would like to say that by November 12th, when we have that hearing, that we have the language for the HB 432. Is that doable? Is that doable? That's my only question. Right. So, uh, first, first question you asked is is that doable is that timeline doable from yes. my perspective yes okay so I that's can, the I can, hb 432 just yes. that one piece okay i can i can have that prepared okay for uh under this timeline okay and do you guys feel comfortable with that i know you have open enrollment and everything but this to me seems like one of those that is going to be some standard language we're probably not going to go above and beyond. We're going to go with what the law you know, says. There's going to be other jurisdictions who have come up with this language. It's not a, I don't anticipate us wordsmithing this, you know, because right. you should bring it to us in the legal form. I think that just caught back on. So I would like, I would like to address that at the public hearing so that we can make a recommendation, yes or no, so it can be taken to council. And we can, it can be presented as this is a law change. So this is why we're bringing it to you now. We realize this is in the middle of the political season and all that. But we still have to move forward as personnel board. And then at that meeting, we discuss that and make a recommendation or not. And we also decide at the next meeting, based on what you're going to bring to us for triage, what's the next thing we're going to do. It's not just going to be section, you know, this or that. That's again fine. that where we roll. That's correct. You know. Okay. So I would make a motion that we, again, meet on our regularly scheduled meeting time of November 12th, 2021 to be held here in this building from 10 to noon. That that be a public hearing to provide a recommendation from the personnel board regarding language related to House Bill 432 and to discuss, let me do this first. Let me make that, put that period there. That's my motion for that period of that. Yeah, I think essentially we're saying we're gonna adopt. Is that right? <clears throat> my loud voice. Yeah, I'm sorry, my hearing's not great either. The grandkids. <laughs> Children. Children. <laughs> no, yeah. no, we're saying we're going to adopt this schedule uh, as presented. No, right? no. My motion is that we're. My first motion is that we're. I don't want to adopt this as a full document. No, because no. I'm talking no. like yes. literally 
yes. for the next meeting, November 12th, to be here. 10 yes. noon is a public hearing. Yes. Proper notice will be given. We will be provided the documents yeah. related to House Bill 432. So that's one thing, because I know it's quick. You know, we're going to have to chop, chop to get all that done. I know that's, we're running out of time. So that was my motion yes. for that one piece. Yes. So can we, can we get like a second on that motion and then yes. vote and. Yes, is there a second well, to that? I, Go ahead. House Bill 432, has that already passed and yes. signed into, into it law? Has, it has already gone into effect. So we don't. Well, why would we have to have a meeting in regard to something like that? Because Wouldn't that have already been done, well, you know, it, and we have to live well, with whatever it is. Anytime there's a change to personnel policies and procedures, we have, we are, we don't have to, but by charter, we are supposed to be given the opportunity to provide a recommendation from the personnel board as to whether that should be accepted. So the law is in effect, but we don't have a policy on the book. Why, why would that be necessary? A law is law. We don't, we don't, well, you know, we have you, to live with whatever has been passed by whomever. <laughs> Right, but once you take the law and incorporate it into the personnel policies and procedures for the city of Independence, then you have to have, well, you should have personnel board input because the council is going to have to approve the change. Now, most likely you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's a law, and you're using the standard language, and we're going to say that's, you know. But why wouldn't that be something an administrative regulation sent down, down by the city manager, mayor, or somebody? to everybody that, hey, guess what? These people passed this law. We can't change anything. Right, you know, but we, we have to live with it, I guess. But we have to put it in the personnel policies and procedures, one, so that employees know about it. I'm not sure you have to. Um, I personally, and I'm not an attorney, but being an HR, if it is not written in a policy and procedure, then someone comes to you and wants to use that leave and you don't have a policy and procedure for that and you just make a call on the fly one you don't have something to compare to that says oh well you know this person should have this many days or whatever it is mm -hmm. to look at and then you're setting precedent because you don't have a policy and then eventually you're like, oh gosh, you know, we've had three or four people come to us with this over the past couple of years and we're dealing with it differently every time, which just sets us up for, you know, risk management, you know, issues. I mean, I think it's just like anything else. The FMLA, when, you know, the firm, the Medical Leave Act, Family Medical Leave Act was passed, we had to pull that into our personnel policies and procedures. Yeah, but I, I you know, I mean, they passed a lot of stuff when I was at Truman Medical Center we didn't have to amend our personnel rules and policies to incorporate state law with regard to whatever the issue was. I just don't understand why it's necessary to incorporate. Maybe the attorney, maybe you can give us, you can referee this and, and say who's right. Sure. Well, the other thing that happens is, is yes, the law may go into effect, the state of Missouri may say, here is a minimum. This is the minimum the law requires. But as we kind of discussed early on, you may take a look at it and say, you know, I think I think they should be given more time off. Or I think, you know, we should be, you know, giving more benefit. And so that's that's one of the reasons that we want to, you know, actually put it in the in the policy. Um, you know, you bring up a good point. A lot of people don't even know about the new law. They won't even know that that's an option that they can they can take leave for that reason. And so, um, you know, we always incorporate, even if there's a state law, we always incorporate it into our books. Are we going to enhance the law then? Are we going to add something to it? Is that what you're saying? We might. Well, that's you where might. the question comes in. Yeah. That you're going to, they're going to present to us two weeks before the public hearing. I, I'm, I'm not going to quote from the law, but it says each person gets in this situation gets three days. The city looks at it and says, well, we really think they should get four. And so then they're going to tell us we think they should get four. And then we can discuss, well, we think you should just stick with three. And again, mm -hmm. I'm talking, you know, just yeah. basic numbers. But I think we also have to consider the fact that putting these things, I, for instance, think about a firefighter who works 24-hour shifts. 
And so if that firefighter has falls under this law, does that mean he gets three shifts off or he gets three consecutive days off of which one may be one that he doesn't work? I mean, I just know that we don't have, we're not just strictly an eight to five, Monday through Friday, full-time, part-time, whatever. We have people get who are work different schedules. And I know anytime you get into a jurisdictional thing where you have a fire department or an ambulance district or whatever it is, those are things that have to be addressed, you know? So I don't want a firefighter to have that issue who gets, I'm not saying, I don't, whatever the rule is. And if we say, oh, well, we're going to give them three days. Well, well, I work Monday, Wednesday, Friday this week. Oh, okay. So you get entire three days off. That's a question versus you get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because it's three consecutive days. I mean, I don't know the law well enough to know that. And I don't know, but those are things that have to be churned out. And especially because we are set up by the charter, you know, stating that there's certain requirements and things that have to be done. Unfortunately, I don't think it's quite as easy to say, management says, take this, we want to do this. And the board of directors says, okay, yeah, that's great. You know, we have levels of authority that we have to get passed by. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I think the FIMLA was a perfect example. Um, that was quite broad and I know I come from Children's Mercy Hospital. We took that and added other relatives to be included. So grandma was included or grandpa was included. Um, so I, I, yeah, I think, I think there has to be a policy that goes with the bill. Okay. Is that discussion? Are we done with that? Yes, we are. Okay. Thank you. So we've had a first and we've had a second on the motion. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we're at the point of any the, further discussion. I'm sorry. Does everybody remember the motion that was made now? Or we had too much discussion? I don't know. I'm Are you okay with the motion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Ron? Yeah. Okay. 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 So then. So, so then. Go ahead. So then I would make a second motion that at the meeting on November 12th, 2021, which will be he held here at the utilities building from 10 a.m. to noon, that the second item on the agenda will be to discuss the next, let me back up one second. At that meeting, we will pre be presented a list of the personnel policies and procedures triage for immediate need to lesser need. And then we will look at that list and choose the next item that we will address the next month. Mm, okay. Is That's there, my motion. I is there, yeah, so there's a motion. Is there a second? Do we all understand the motion? Is there a second? What, Ron? Yeah. Everybody? Um, is there a second on that motion? Somebody needs to say if there's a second out loud so that the... Oh, I don't want to... <laughs> we got two new Play it, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll second it. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Uh-huh. Okay, so... Now, these meetings are going to be like public hearing the employees... If anybody's interested, they can come and. Oh. Is yes, that... it will be a public yeah. hearing. All right. And, and, you know, as we've, you know, we're allowing people to yeah. come to virtually any meeting. Oh, yeah. It's an open meeting, but this will be one that will be posted and presented as a public hearing. Yeah, I just want to alleviate, I just want to alleviate any anxiety that anybody has that we're making some crazy changes on stuff. And, and, you know, and that's they, they where, can be here and they can oh. listen to it and, and input into it. You know, these gentlemen have mics and they can input right today. And uh, I think everybody should be in that position. Well, and um, I, I think we're meeting what you're saying. And this is what I experienced. When we started, you know, when we decided in July that we were going to start meeting monthly and we were going to kind of be 
as opposed to just an issues come up and we're going to meet. We started saying, we're going to meet. We want to know what's going on. We want to start looking at policies and procedures and things like that. There was angst amongst the employees because they didn't know. It's because it's a change. They didn't know, oh, you're meeting. So what are you meeting about? How is that going to affect me? Am I going to lose a benefit or lose my job or, you know, you're going to do something? So now that we have established that we're meeting the second Friday of every month and that we're going to be working off of this document to, you know, it's a fluid document, so it'll change to do this. I think that's exactly what we're doing is alleviating the angst because we are saying, like I was very adamant about, we have to have the agendas out with the documents that we're looking at or depending on their if they're confidential status or whatever, you know, but out to the, out to the people so that they can read it and then come to the meeting. We're actually, I think, again, alleviating the anxiety that we created unintentionally, totally unintentionally in July. And I think right. that if they come and they see like, oh, they're taking up uh, uh, HB 432 and the attorney says, well, this is the law this is the language. We've had a chance to review it, present our questions. They answer our questions. Then we open it up. Does anybody here have a discussion in, in a public meeting, public, uh, public meeting, any input on that? Once we hear from everybody in the room who wants to speak at that meeting, then we vote to recommend, not recommend, or send back for further consideration. So if they see that we're trying to work on these things and we're trying to do them in an order that makes sense, like this is a new law, we need to get this into effect. We don't have an ethics policy. We need an ethics policy. And they see how we handle these. I think that they will build, it will build confidence in us from them. Because we're not just saying, here's a whole new 50 page document you go and guess what we changed. You know what I mean? That's sometimes the way I feel with different bills and things that are out there. You're like, you go figure it out. But this is where we're going to show them that we are going to use a procedure and we're going to follow that procedure. I think that that will build confidence. Now, I also want to say, and this is, of course, up to the group. These guys are my friends. Every one of them who's been here are my friends. But... If we are going to have at each meeting that is not a public hearing, that we're going to allow comments from employees or citizens, whatever, then I think we should add that to the agenda as an item where they can make comments. And I don't say that to make anybody be quiet, don't, you know, we don't want to hear, but I think we need to keep this in an orderly fashion, just like the council does. Because the council doesn't just, you know, entertain back and forth discussions. You know what I mean? I don't, it's not that I don't want people to be able to speak, but I think we need to add that to the agenda as time for comments from city employees, retirees, whatever. Does that make sense, Ron? Well, I just, I don't mind, you know, if we had. 15 or 20 people representing police department, public works, utilities, the fire department. I don't have a bit of problems with people interjecting in our discussions because I'm going to learn something from what they say to help me yeah, pass the boat. And, and I do understand that. And when we have, you know, four or five here, if we do end up with 10 or 15 people, that's when, unless it's a public hearing. If it's a public hearing, you open the public hearing. Anybody in favor speaks. Anybody not in favor speaks. Comments, questions, whatever. It, I'm just concerned that the day that we get, you know, five of us plus ten who are all inputting into a group. I've never worked in a group where you could get a policy figured out with 15 people plus staff, you know, providing input. But I, I do want everybody here to hear me say again, I do not want to limit the input of people, but I think it should be during a designated time or the motion's called and then you say, yes, we can, we'll take comments from the public. 
I don't want our meetings to get overrun and become, you know, 25 people trying to write a policy or agree to a policy. I just see that as getting out of control at some point. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we control it. I have had no problems with the interactions we've had with these because they've had good input. Mm -hmm. But I'm concerned the day that a big issue comes up and we get a lot of people on how much we want to allow comments. Again, I'm talking about not during public hearings. When it's public hearing, it's public hearing and everybody speaks. So. Well, I, th I think it's important. I know at the, at the one council meeting, the uh, representative of the fire union, or, or police union in this case, made a presentation. And for the first time, I really fully understand why we have a problem recruiting police officers. <clears throat> When Lee Summit has a limited amount of uh, calls and Independence has, what, 13 or 14 in a shift, I never thought of that. And I thought it was maybe they had crummy facilities in Independence or old police cars. And it's the fact that they had to answer so many calls. And he made a wonderful presentation. I learned a lot just listening to it. Oh, and, and I, I changed my whole attitude. Right, and and I don't disagree with that at all. But that's the way the council handles it. They open it up for people mm -hmm. like him to speak, or for like Chris to speak from the firefighters union. Yeah, I, you know, and I, I learned, you know I mean? some, they, I learned they, something that one of the fire trucks could only make certain turns. Yeah, I well, mean that yeah. makes an impression. Right. So, so <laughs> that's again, not good. So that again, we're hearing. That's why, I say, that's why I say we need a, a new fire truck in every station. That's crazy. Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> they need some new stations too. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is is that again, that is all allowed by city council. It's just a controlled mechanism to allow that. Nice. So like when they get into discussing whether they're going to give all the officers eight thousand dollars on October first, that gentleman didn't get to jump in and speak again and have dialogue with the council. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just I just want. Please do not let anybody think that I don't want input because I do, but I just want to make sure we have it controlled so that we don't have a point where a meeting gets out of control. Kind of like people on Monday night trying to interject from the audience during a schedule, during an open meeting. That to me is not, that's not the procedure, you know, and that can be controlled. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'm going to just say there are going to be some pretty controversial things that are, that are going to be brought forward. So I, I think we have to prepare ourselves for some pretty tough discussions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. I think everybody needs to get their mindset ready for, I mean, there's a lot of things that can and should be discussed if we are really serious about changing the personnel policies or updating the personnel well, policies. As long as it's not controversial, like on September 25th of 2019. I mean, I thought that was poorly planned and made no sense. And she did a wonderful review of it better than I did. But, you know, that that was that was bad. The sit and you know, you were brand new, so that's not wasn't it your fault. I was, like, Somebody, well, that was, I was like a week in, and I'm yeah, like, What? Right. I don't even think she knew the password to her email, probably at that point. No, but I'm just saying, just after being here for two years and seeing some of the things that I've seen in some of our public meetings, I'm not even talking about a policy like that. Like, that's controversial for other reasons. I'm talking about things like an EEO policy or adding Juneteenth as a holiday, that could be, just from things I've seen, that could be controversial. Um, drug policies that have changed. Um, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of things that have changed in recent years that could potentially spark, you know, and, controversy and I, or, you know. Anxiety. Uh, anxiety and, mm -hmm. or on both sides of a fence. So I, I just think we should really prepare ourselves if we're serious about looking at all the policies, which I think we should be. And I think that 
again, starting with something that is required, that is, I don't know that anybody would argue that somebody who is, you know, in a domestic violence situation should have time, like nobody's gonna come in here and scream, oh my gosh, we should not be allowed time off for that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> that shows them that we're following a procedure and and that it's fluid. So at the next, at November, um, uh, the November 12th meeting, we say, okay, we've looked now at the new triage list you provided us, and we are going to take up the section on, uh, I'm throwing something out, I don't know, uh, Juneteenth holiday, let's just say. If we feel that that's going to then cause a lot of angst, anxiety, concern, feelings, opinions, then, then maybe we say, okay, we need to have a public hearing on this just to hear what the public, and that would presumably be retirees and, and employees, to have time to listen. Separate, different from the meeting where we give a recommendation, yes, no, or send it back for further information. Because I think we'll be able to somewhat determine which ones are going to be um, more controversial or uh, contentious, whatever the word might be, than others. And once we get this new triage list on November 12th, and that can be published out there, then members of the coalition, the unions, the retirees can see the things that are on there. And I would venture to guess they will start giving feedback on we're going to be, you know, like we think that might be something that's a big deal. So we then have to decide if it's triaged high enough, and even if it's gonna be a big deal, it's triaged high enough, we have to go with it. We have to work through that. If it's like, okay, there's four things that are up here that, and one of them's not that controversial, but they're in the red triage zone, then let's do that one. And, we, and again, we present these to the council one at a time for digestion. Now there are gonna be times, I do believe, where policies are interlinked. So you're like, okay, well, you want to make a change over here, but now that changes this and this. So we may need to present all three of those changes at once, but let's not overwhelm them if we don't have to. But let's stay fluid enough that we might have to have a public hearing for discussion if we think we're going to have 5, 10, 15 people who want to have input. Well, but, you know, just in addressing what she said, when you bring these controversial issues, and I think you mentioned drug policy or alcohol or whatever, I think you need to address what, what you do other than in a punitive manner. In other words, do you have an employee assistance program that you can refer people to without them getting in trouble? And, and you need to help the employees get over that problem rather than just say, well, if you come to work and you're under the influence of marijuana, particularly when medical marijuana is spreading all around and recreational probably will be voted on, what do you do to help that employee rather than he's going to be fired and he's going to lose his benefits and so forth? What's just address the entire scope of it in a hum human way. And I, I, I think that should be something you should be creative and right in, the, in, the, in your document. And I think we do have, I mean, we have a disciplinary policy and I believe it's written into all the union contracts as well as, you know, to, you know, if we suspect something and, you know, then you know, is that a write-up? Is that a day off? Is that a suspension? Is that a, you know, all those things. But again, as we do one policy at a time, if we have a drug use policy, we address all of that during the drug use policy. So I'm not saying that we should exclude anything like that, but we need to triage and do the things that are most important and in a humane way. I mean, I don't think we're up here to be draconian or anything, so. Well, and I just know that our concerns about uh, meetings getting out of control because of all of the input that we want to hear 
and that we are getting. Just know that uh, I'm a pretty controlling person myself, and I can see when things are getting out of control. <laughs> and I know how to get that back into control. I've had those experiences, so I, I'm not concerned about that at all. <clears throat> I think we will hear the comments. We will keep it under control. Um, so I, I think let's move forward. Uh, I think we all have that talent. We all have that uh, ability to speak out, um, to tell someone it's time to back off if we need to, but um, hopefully that won't happen. Okay, where are we? I don't know. Go ahead. I, unfortunately, I can't get a connection and I didn't print the agenda out. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. So the agenda, um, let's see. So the agenda um, well, actually, we had agenda item number two that we just now finished, maybe. That was the initial review and discussion regarding revisions, personal policies, checklist, and timeline. So that was agenda item number two. We've already done agenda item number three, which is we decided to keep our meetings on Fridays from 10 to noon in this room. And that, that was it on the agenda. And we decided on that, so... Say that again. We decided on that, right? So yes, we have decided we're, on that. We're, set, we're done with that one. That we will okay. be here, and we will be here from 10 to noon on the Friday. So that, that was our agenda. Is there anything else anyone would like to add to the agenda? <coughs> I would. One second, please. Okay. <coughs> Uh-oh. No, I, I just needed a little... Is there any in, in the building? Yeah. Well, I didn't bring enough to share, so it's probably catching up with me that I didn't bring enough of my bar to share. Um, I would um, kind of reiterate, as I've discussed in the previous two meetings, is if something is not in the agenda that's not presented seven days in advance, that we not add items to the agenda during the meeting. So personally, I would say if there's no further items on the agenda and we have made our decision as to when we're meeting next, I would actually make a motion to adjourn. I second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. <clears throat> Good deal. Thank you very much. We're going to get that. Oh, we are going to get that. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're going to get that. Gentlemen, on. I'm sorry, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, it, did you adjourn the meeting? Yes. Okay, I was wanting to get on the speaker's. Vero, but <laughs> you may speak if it if it please the board i can talk now or i can keep my mouth shut no don't keep your mouth shut <laughs> we don't Which, want that I mean, if, uh, please speak i i don't know that i understand the sequence because i have a hard time hearing but oh looks like there's a comprehensive change to the policy procedures that will be metered out a chapter at a time on, on a on a schedule mm -hmm. And some of them might be controversial. I'm pretty sure there will be. But it looks like the at will, if that raises its head, will be controversial. And the uh, reducing any benefits, uh, breaking longstanding institutional past practices that you enjoy. So, and I want to go back, and it's your world you know it's your province but if you know you have controversy coming i'm wondering as a suggestion would you not sit down the people that are going to come in here with the problem is going to be employee groups or retirees most you, you could get a citizen but it seems like you would like we did in the past i'm going to belabor it again is you sit down with the coalition and say here's what we're planning on doing because I, if history teaches me anything, these fine uh, city directors already have an idea of where they want to go. Now they could correct me and say I'm wrong, but they know that something's coming down the road that's controversial. So it seemed like it would be a diffusing mechanism to sit down with with the coalition bef beforehand. Because a lot of that stuff would be okay, boilerplate, boilerplate now. 
we have to deal with something and let and have that grappled out before it gets to you to where when they come to you they say here's the coalition position here's ours or we were able to uh, work collaboratively and find a solution that met the city's needs and that that didn't or that they, the other group could live with so i'm just i'm loading that in again that uh it would be really my plea and I think it would help the board and the process because I, I think Mr. Adams is talking about it, it should be more simple because rather than make the pressure point, you guys seem like you could have some work going on to where what you're looking at is here's what they say, here's what we say. And if there was be any rancor, or it would probably minimize rancor, you know, manage controversy a little bit if that was the approach. Now, all I can do is ask that now, whether or not you will direct that is your call and uh i don't i think you're right about talking at the end of the meeting because it's you guys' business mm -hmm. so you know and but at the open meeting then you get your chance to say your piece whatever but i just think that it, it would be more efficient for you guys in the and the in the uh, city in the process these fine people were to sit down with the coalition of bargaining agents and they would quickly figure out, here's what we're looking at, you know, and they'd quickly, out, we're going to have a problem here. So wh why do we have it in front of you guys? Or let's take it there and have it, you know, at what you call a intelligible to where here's what they say, here's what they say kind of thing. And I go. I'm sorry. Uh, and I was just going to say, um, I, I don't disagree with you, Butch, but I think what if we can work it out such. First of all, I know I don't I don't know how often they meet, but Labor Coalition, you know, meets with directors, management, whatever. I don't I don't know how all that works exactly, but I think that the coalition. And others who are you know not represented employees, if they want to have a discussion in a meeting with these people to discuss okay we know you're going to come come to the next item is going to be the drug policy and we as the coalition want to have input on that that you guys meet with them to give them your input so that when they come to us it is all of that has been brought together so we're not meeting with the coalition and then we're you know we have a meeting here and i don't know that um it, like if we're going to meet with the coalition independent like we like i don't think one of us should do that because i think we operate as a body mm -hmm. so basically then but to say that is then if we act as we're acting as a body then we say okay we we know because the list came out and we're like oh they're going to be looking at the drug policy and whoever's the head of the labor coalition gets a hold of me and says this is going to be a heavy topic we're going to want to have input we are going to spend time you know making an appointment and talking to these guys but we would also like to have input in front of the personnel board then that's when we say we want to have a public hearing on the drug policy where we're just here to listen to everything if you feel like you haven't been able to resolve with them or that type of no thing no coalition meeting but, well, well no i i can you talk yeah uh, my name is Chris Fairbanks. I'm with the Firefighters Independence. Talk, um, can you talk into the mic so that I, Ron can hear you? Can you guys hear me okay? I hear I'll speak loud. loud so he has a loud I got voice. a pretty good voice. So, um, it, it, it's on our on us our on our responsibility to make sure we know what's going on with personnel board hearings and personnel board procedures and what's going on with those discussions. So we do meet regularly with the coalition. So when those issues do come up, we will address administration and, and give our, and address our concerns. I think that gives you guys ability when it, when the information comes to you we've already had those discussions i think that's what you're trying to get at laura correct yeah so us meeting with administration on those issues we need to be make sure we're on top of what's going on meeting with them so they can address that before it's presented to the board for discussion okay. so right. and we'll do that we'll actively engage with that we'll bring that up at our labor coalition meetings as well awesome do, so do is there a point where we can get the comprehensive comprehensive list of what's being contemplated and for change? and this is now this is the fluid document. It is out on the city's website. Um, 
now again this is you know we've parsed and pieced and that will change meeting to meeting, meeting so we need, meeting. we'll be watching for the agenda as it comes out and that we get it so there's no way to get at a comprehensive idea that we're going to deal with hours of work uh right. sexual harassment uh right. vacation so, holidays we yeah. can't get that it'll come out in uh, in, tra in tranches or this is what in my motion my motion was that by the next meeting the november 12th meeting and i say they the front of the room will triage issues for us so i expect a list of okay. i mean it doesn't have to be 20 we'll issues but it'll be you know operation. whatever right. then, okay. so then we present that to you so you know the next meeting and so on but then we'll pick so from that list what we're going to hit the next time so yes, you will know that these. Yeah. Good. I I never did get a copy of anything, so I'm just kind of tired of my ear. Did you not get the email? I'm sorry. Did you not get the email with the list? I got the email with the with the schedule. You know, the hearing will be, and the, I didn't get yeah, an email. That, yeah. I didn't get an email with the text of anything. You're talking about the text of the bills? Or, I mean, this is what I got. The minutes, of course, we got copies of the minutes. And then this, it was put together by the attorney's firm. Yeah. I, that was other the, than the schedule, I didn't get anything, so. Yeah, so this was this is the only thing that I got other than the minutes right. that was sent out. Right. And you, in the right, U.S. mail or in the? No, on, email. No, email. On email. Yeah. Okay, email. I got emails, so I didn't get it. Yeah, yes. But you, but you, you read the part about the SB and the 432. Did you get that off of this document? I can't see. <laughs> My vision's not that good. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay. So, but there, it's called the checklist and timeline revisions to personnel policy. Yeah. yeah. That they that we were emailed. Um, not to me. What? Okay. We need to have the. I would. Well, we're way outside of our adjourned meeting, but we need to have a policy and procedure that that when an email gets sent out from whoever it be, that we all need to respond and say, got it. So that if you don't get, if you send it or you send it and you don't get a got it, then we've got a problem with email. Cause that's, yeah, you should, you should have had this and the minutes. And I, I personally think that uh, rather, yes, email's nice, but not everybody has email. So I think it would just be nice that um, we go ahead and have hard copies. Yeah, and, and I don't mind doing that. I'm just that's how we always did in the past was add hard copies of you know anything that we had, Teresa. I and I and I don't disagree with that. It's just that when we're going to have things happening, you know, quickly, like if we're going to have a policy and know something in the next two weeks. They're going to have to write it in the next five days because the mail service now is slowing down, and we're going to we're going to risk not getting it until after the meeting happens. So I think we need to have both email and mail, but we need to have a double check. If you send out an email and I haven't responded in 12, 24 hours, you say, "Laura, did you get it?" And then if I don't respond again, then you reach out to me and we correct email addresses because it might be going to your junk email too. But this is, but this and the agenda are all online with the city. So of course the minutes you wouldn't have had to review ahead of time because then you'll put the minutes out until you approve them. Well, but this stuff on, is online. When you say online, is that on the city schedule, the city website? Yes, yes. So you go. All, all you, I found on the city website are the agenda items one, two, three, four, and so I didn't to, see any text. So you go to the, I always just search City of Independence Agenda, so it takes me right to that page. I don't have to fiddle around getting in, in there from the main page. Mm -hmm. then, it, then you go down, and you scroll down to Personnel Board. You click on Personnel Board. Yes, I do. And then you scroll back up. Unfortunately, it doesn't open up right next to you. You have to scroll back up to the right-hand corner, and then that's where this was, oh. the agenda for day. I'm, I'm not, and I don't take this wrong, but I'm not saying it's pretty. I, I, I have plenty of things that I would make a list of things. I'd love to have our website changed, to but it is on there. 
but we it's should. not Facebook and all that nonsense. No, no, oh, no, no, okay. no, no, right. no, no, none of this has gone out on, this won't go out on social media. This is just right. on the website. Right. Just on but the website. if you come down to knowing that we have a meeting on whatever the, you know, the Friday the 8th, and we've agreed you're going to have the agenda and the supporting documents a week ahead. So if you haven't gotten those a week ahead, then I know I will be reaching out and saying, hey, we haven't gotten that. So if you're not seeing it in your email at least a week in advance of the meeting, somehow something's not getting to you. Yeah, I've had your problem before. Yeah, I mean, we just, I think we just can double check, you know, like, yes, I respond, got it, got it, got it. And then you follow up with who doesn't receive it. And I don't, I don't have a problem with people I, mailing I, it out. I didn't want, I, what I'm trying to say, what I was trying to say was that I don't need a hard copy mailed to my house. Oh. I would like a hard copy at the meetings. Oh, 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 yeah. I, those sad. That's good. Because I don't always have. I know I didn't have a connection here. Oh, yeah. 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 So therefore. I understand what you're saying. You know, I'm kind of flying blind here. Mm -hmm. and along with everybody else and so it's hard to keep up with an agenda and you're not seeing it so by having a hard copy here right well and what i need to learn to do because like i didn't have one last week but i didn't have my ipad i printed this out because this is five pages or six pages so i'm like i want to i got to see that um but you know when you get that email you can open print it and bring it so if we it, now i know i can't rely on this i just got to print it and bring it myself you know what i mean yeah well my printer's on strike it works when it wants to. oh you need to pay that printer more <laughs> I, I had a printer for 10 years. I yeah. To buy but yeah i don't think it would hurt if we break with yeah, if yeah, the city or what who could bring just a couple of copies I don't see that's a problem. I understand what you're saying. I thought you were talking about snail mail. I'm like, oh gosh. No, no. <laughs> You'll get it for Christmas. Okay. Um, we're adjourned. We're adjourned. <laughs> We've been adjourned. Are you? My mouth is closed now. <laughs> Good meeting, guys. Thank you.